Welcome back to my wood shop. Today we are focusing on building Z back doors. You know, we don't buy them because the camps are odd sizes or they're a little offset. So we make Z back doors, and that really is just taking some V match material, whether it's eastern white pine or whatever you have in your area, and laying it out and putting a bar across the back of it, locking it all together so it can't really shift. So let's get started. So we use a ton of eastern white pine on the projects we work on. Um, it's all over the state. It's readily available. Depending on what the area you are in, um, you know, it's a great, if you have access to it, it's a great wood to use. Uh -huh. It comes in different lengths, different widths. This is, I believe, eight inch wide V-match. So I'll draw it out real fast. You know, the, the reason they call it a Z-back door is because you'll have your V-match laid out like this, and then you'll do a three quarter inch board on the back of it. And these help lock it together. And then you'll have a board that comes down to make your Z. And that helps it from shifting that way. Um, and again, it all depends on how much rigidity you need. There's many different ways to lay it out, but today I'm just gonna show you the basic Z back door, which typically we use on most of our cabin projects. I'm gonna be building a roughly seven foot, uh, roughly an 84 inch tall by 36 inch wide door. So I'm going to just kind of cut these to a rough length. I'm just cutting these right now at, these are 16 footers. I'm cutting them at eight feet, just again, so that I can, they'll fit on the work table. And then I'll kind of get the size and the shape laid out and go from there. I know it's real easy to overlook and sometimes forget, but it's always important when you're using power tools of any type to have proper ear protection and eye protection. Knots are fine. Obviously with a door, you don't want anything you can see through but those, they'll all be locked together. They'll be plenty strong. Really, it's loose knots and holes that you want to worry about. Using a one by eight V-match, each board's roughly seven inches to seven and a quarter. So probably six boards, and then we can kind of lay it out on that. Uh, materials are pretty simple for what you need. You're gonna need your pine, whether it's three quarter inch, inch and a half, and you'll need the proper depth screws. I'm going with three quarter inch and three quarter inch boards on top of that. So I'm using an inch and a quarter torque head T20 screw. And I believe these are exterior grade, but any screw, the right depth will work for you. Okay, so first step, try and lock them all together best you can. I wanna build a 35 inch door. When I lay out five boards, that puts me at 35 inches exactly, but that doesn't account for my tongue or the groove. So if I had to remove that, this would be less than 35 inches. So I'm going to need to add another board. So now I've got roughly 42 inches to play with. So 42 minus 35 gives me seven inches. So if I take off three inches on that side to start, then I'll do another measurement to get that side. I have these all laid out. I know what I need to rip off this board. If you look at these boards, this one looks like, you know, it was on the end, it's got the most knots. I would recommend you picking a board that has less knots, or if you know you're ripping off your groove, if there is a board that has a defect in the groove and you know that's gonna be ripped off, choose that one so you can get rid of it right away. And locking this board in the center, those knots won't be a problem. It's just if it's on a side, it could have, a, you know, if you've got to lock screws in, it could be in the wrong spot. Typically it will be in the wrong spot. So cheat that to the middle and choose a board that's gonna be more practical for you. Like this second one right here. When I look at the boards, I can see that this one you know, it's not clear through, but it does have a groove there, so might as well get rid of that. 
because I know I'm getting rid of the groove. And then this one here has a little bit of a blemish in the tongue. Again, it won't affect anything, but might as well get rid of it if you have to cut one down anyways. So now I've got that one side ripped down. I'll grab a couple clamps. Okay. If you know you've got material that's all identical, you could very easily take and do the math, lay it out on paper, cut what you needed. I pull, you know, where we're pulling lumber from so many different places, I tend to do the math, put it all together, and then do one final measurement before I make a cut to make sure there isn't any discrepancies in the width of the boards which could compound. So that's three, three and three quarters is what I would need to rip this board down to to get my 35 inches. And a lot of times too, if we're making these doors prior, we'll just leave them two inch and a half, two inches wide and cut them down on site. Again, just to make sure they're what we're looking for for width. All right. So now I have the width of my door figured out. I'm going to cut them all to length. Square up an edge first. Um, it's good to start with everything square. A lot of times too, you know, working on these camps, you've got floors that are on level. It's good to start with everything square and then you can kind of cheat it as necessary. Now I've got a 35 inch door. And now it's time to figure out the Z's. Typically when we're doing camps and walls, we're putting the V-match with the V-groove facing out. So we would put our Z on the flat back of the door so that that would be on the inside. And if you look from the outside, it's all the same pattern going across and you don't see the Z. 35 inch wide door. I like to hold the Z in at least an inch. So if you take inch off each end, that gives you 33. I'm gonna go 32, so it'll be in inch and a half. So I need two pieces, 32 inches. The width really depends on what material you have available. It could be a one by six, one by four, one by eight, one by 12. It all depends on what you have. So looking around the workshop, I have two pieces of, I don't even know what this is. Five and a half, one by five, one by six right here, ready to go. I'll cut those both at 32. One for there. One for there. I try and go in inch and a half. You don't need to bring your board all the way up tight. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that. One, it could interfere with your door jam. If you ever need to cut down your door, then you're cutting more material. That's why you can leave it down a little further. You want at least two screws per board, depending on how wide they are. You can alternate them. You know, you can do two, two. Again, it all depends on what you're, what you're worried about. And then you can release that clamp. And fine tune it, five and a quarter. Five and a quarter. So if I go boom, 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 boom. Sure. And you don't want to be right because this has the tongue and groove, you don't want to be too close to the tongue and groove, so hold your screw back at least three quarters from each seam. Now on to this end, same thing, I'm going to stay up five inches. 
just try and keep it uniform again so that way you know the door depending on where it is could go in this so there really is no top or bottom i guess it's just a blank Put one screw here to lock everything together. Then go to the other side, make sure it all adds up. Two screws for boards help with the door racking. Now onto the middle. This is a five and a half inch wide board, so I'm just gonna match up what is there. So first step will just be ripping off the tongue and then the groove. Now that that's ripped down, I'm gonna position it on the door. This edge of the board will go to the top corner. You know what I'll do? I'll put a screw to hold it right there. This edge of the board will come to the top inside corner there. Do the same thing down here. And take a square, line it up best you can. Or you can mark the underside and then connect those lines once it's off. Let's see what happens. So that angle's good there. She's a little off there. All right. So it goes from nothing to about that. We should have it. So now that you've got that cut and the angle you want, you can lock it down. Again, try and get it two screws per board and it all depends on the pattern you want. Yeah. Again, as long as you get two screws into each board on each piece, you should be fine. And if not, add a few more screws. So that is a basic Z-back door. We use them all the time. It's durable. It can easily be customized. Again, we're working in cabins in a lot of places where the floors aren't level. Next steps would be to bring it to the location it's being installed cut it to size, the final cut, and then install your hinges and a door latch. Thanks for joining my wood shop, and hopefully you found some of this helpful.